call the council to order for tonight's meeting. And tonight, we'll be led in the, uh, the invocation by Reverend Karen Sumner from the University of Sioux Falls. And after the invocation, we'll have the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. So at this time, please rise. Everything that happens here would be glorifying to you. Pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, let's get started. Is there a, a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved, Benninger. Benninger moves. Is there a second? Second, Costello. Costello seconded. Further comments? See no further comments. All in favor, approve the consent agenda. Vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. Council members Kavanaugh, Knudsen, Litz? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Present. Benninger? Yes. Brown? Yes. Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. All members present voted. The consent agenda is approved six yes, two, two excused. Now, is there any, any additions or deletions, or is there a motion to approve the regular agenda? Move for approval, Jameson. Jameson second. moves. Is there a second? Who seconded it? Second, second Litz. Litz, was that you? Motion been made, second to approve the uh, regular agenda. No further discussion. All in favor of that motion approved? Well, yes, those opposed vote no. Council members Litz? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Benega? Yes. Brown? Yes. Costello? Yes. Jameson. Yes. All members present have voted. The regular agenda has been approved. Six yes, two excused. At this time, we set aside five minutes for anyone that wishes to address the council on a topic of interest to them. Is there anyone that wishes to come forward and address the council for public input? Seeing no one come forward, we will move into the regular agenda at this time then. Item number one. Second reading, an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, conveying Tract 1, Cogley Addition, to the City of Sioux Falls. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council. Uh, my name is Chad Heavey. I'm with the Office of Public Works, Engineering Division. This ordinance conveys Tract 1 of the Cogley Addition to the South Afton Avenue, LLC. This tract of land is just south of the Harrisburg Explore Elementary School and runs from 82nd Street south to 85th Street. This tract is adjacent to residential lots that front on South Afton Avenue. This tract is the result of a survey error during the original platting process. It's approximately 20 feet wide at its widest point by approximately 1,100 feet long and comprises just under a half an acre. The tract was donated to the city in 2005 in conjunction with right-of-way that was acquired for the construction of 82nd Street. The South Afton Avenue LLC is comprised of the homeowners on South Afton Avenue. Dakota, Appra Dakota Appraisal Service appraised the property on July 26th of 2006 at $9,300. Uh, during the, the process, we did receive interest from two different groups one being the South Af Afton Avenue LLC, the other being the property owners um, to, the, to the west. Sealed bids were received on November 2nd, 2006. The only bid received was from the LLC in the amount of $18,601. Uh, the engineering department recommends approval of this ordinance. Questions of Chad on item number one. Just, just a question, why does it say conveying Tract 1 to the city of Sioux Falls? You know, I read that too, and I, it's my understanding, it should say conveying, well, I rewrote it in my notes, I guess, well, conveying I Tract 1 of the Cogley edition to the South Afton Avenue LLC. It looks like an error, you're right. That's what it looked like, it just so make sure the public record is correct. Okay, other questions? Could you repeat that, please? <laughs> so who it repeat what you just oh, said, Chad. Um, I wrote it that this ordinance conveys Tract 1 of the Cogley Edition to the South 
Afton Avenue LLC. And Afton should be spelled A-F-T-Y-N in case it isn't. <laughs> it isn't. The amendment for that? A-F-T-Y-N. I move to amend. Second. Okay, let's, um, okay, let's, let's get a motion to no. pass. Is there a motion to approve it first, and then we'll come back to Pat? We move let's. Let's move. Is there a second? Second, Jameson. Jameson, second. Okay, now, Pat, do you want to amend? Move as said. Mm -hmm. Okay. So is there a second to that motion? Second. Okay. Kermit Staggers. Is, um, everybody understands what the motion to amend is? Everybody understands that? Okay, I see no one. Question, all in favor of the motion to amend will vote yes. <clears throat> Opposed, no. Council members Litz? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Benega? Yes. Brown? Yes. Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. All members present vote, voted. The, the amendment has been approved. Six yes, two uh, excused. Now we're back to the main motion as amended. That's been motion been made and seconded. So all in favor of the motion to approve as amended will vote yes. Those opposed vote no. Council members Litz? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Benega? Yes. Brown? Yes. Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. All members present voted. Item number one has been approved 6 0 as amended. Item number two. Second reading an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, approving the release of a permanent utility easement. This easement is located approximately one mile east of I 229 on Rice Street, southeast of the Valley View Mobile Home Community. In April of 2006, a permanent easement was obtained from the Sweetman Partnership to sewer the Canterbury Heights addition. That addition is located on the east side of Dubuque Avenue, north of Madison Street. The intent was to run a sanitary sewer line through the Cactus Heights addition to provide sewer service to the Canterbury Heights development. Questions of Chairman item number two. Others that wish to address the council on item number two. Council discussion or action? It's a motion. Move for approval, Jameson. Jameson, is there a second? Second, Benninga. Benninga seconds. Further comments? See no further comments. All in favor of uh, item number two being approved? Well, yes, those polls vote no. Council members Litz? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Benninga? Yes. Brown? Yes. Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. All members present voted. Item two has been approved. Six yes. <coughs> Excused. Item number three. Second reading, an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, approving the partial release of permanent utility easement. This easement is associated with the East Side Sanitary Sewer Project. The easement is located a half mile east of the Highway 11 and 69th Street intersection. A permanent easement was obtained in January of 2005. For access to the construction area, and the easement does not contain any pipe. The property owner, Gerald Johnson, at his request, we have obtained a temporary access easement to replace the permanent easement. The temporary access easement will expire upon development of the land. Engineering is comfortable with access to the sanitary sewer pipe and recommends approval. Questions of chat on item number three. Others that wish to address the council on item number three. Council discussion or action? Move to approve, let's. Let's move, is there a second? Second, Costello. Costello seconds. <laughs> further comments? See no further comments. All in favor of approving item number three will vote yes. Those opposed vote no. Council members Litz? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Finnega? Yes. Brown? Yes. Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. All members present have voted. Item number three has been approved. Six yes, two excused. Item number four. First reading, an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, providing supplemental appropriations for the Sioux Falls Stadium renovation project. $200,000. Don Kearney with Parks and Recreation. Uh, Sioux Falls Canaries will be hosting the All-Star Game at Sioux Falls Stadium uh, this year. And in, as it, preparations were being made for this uh, particular All-Star Game, uh, the Canaries staff approached us about the possibility of renovating the visitor's locker room uh, prior to the July 17th game. Um, and what I hope to do is be able to uh, give you a summary of the project and as well as uh, talk to you a little bit about the funding mechanism for the proposed supplemental appropriation. Uh, the project would increase the square footage of the locker room, the visitor's locker room, by 225 square feet. 
uh, which allows more room for the players and the coaches, uh, and then also allows larger lockers to be installed uh, to accommodate their, their gear, and very similar to what the Canaries locker room currently provides. Uh, the bathrooms currently do not meet ADA guidelines in this locker room, and this project would bring those into compliance. Uh, the showers would be reconfigured so that adequate space for showering is made available. Uh, currently, there are pedestal-type showers, and this project would propose to uh, place the shower heads on the perimeter walls of the shower area uh, to provide additional room for the players to be able to shower. And um, one of the other things that it would do is it would replace the water heaters that are currently in the locker rooms. It would replace the lighting, and uh, and it would also provide any necessary upgrades to the HVAC systems uh, that serve that locker room. Uh, I did mention, didn't mention it earlier, but uh, the CIP committee did review the project and did recommend approval of the CIP um, amendment. Uh, that's, let, that's later on your agenda, and uh, the funding obviously. For, for this project is uh, the supplemental appropriation in the amount of 200000 and the Canaries have agreed to pay the $10,000 in design costs associated with the project. Uh, earlier, uh, Council Member Costello asked about <coughs> other ways for uh, the Canaries to participate at a higher level than they currently are. Um, in the short, relatively short period of the time that we had to look at that, one of the thoughts we did have and uh, uh, the staff at the Canaries uh, did talk to their ownership and they were uh, open to being able to possibly extend the contract for another year which would also provide another $111,000 uh, which would uh, would have the met, uh, potential to amend the contract uh, that would provide one more year. Again, you know, obviously they can't commit to that without looking at it, but that was one, the one thing that we were able to come up with um, uh, during the, the interim here. Questions are done. Item number four. <laughs> to extend the contract, uh, Don, from when does our contract with them end? Uh, 2019. 2019, so it would be extended to 2020. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Also, um, I, I guess one concern I have with this present, you know, this request is that it's just, in effect, been given to us today. Uh, you know, we had a briefing at 4 o'clock, and we certainly appreciate uh, the information presented, but I was wondering why we couldn't have had information on this much sooner, because... Uh, some of the information that you gave us here is dated December 4th, 2006, and I'm just wondering, because, you know, we're just in effect being asked to approve $200,000 uh, within just a few hours of hearing about it for the first time formally. Yeah, you know, I, I, that's a legitimate concern, I think, Council Member Staggers. Uh, one of the things, other, there are several steps that we had to put in place. Uh, we obviously had to get on the uh, CIP committee agenda to know whether uh, there was going to be a recommendation out of that committee uh, before moving forward. Uh, and quite honestly, um, uh, this, this has been a, a fast track project and we've been trying to uh, pull the piece of in information together just to get it to, to you today. And so we were, as Council Member Costello and Jameson were out this past Friday to give a tour of that facility. Um, we we're working as fast as we could to try to get it before you. Um, and obviously we would like to add another month or two to be able to work through our processes with you. Further questions? Don, um, as you know, at 4 o'clock today, I asked several questions about this project, and again, I'm supportive of always enhancing our facilities. I think, uh, you know, an important comment that was a reminder that was made to me today during the 4 o'clock meeting, which I hadn't probably given enough thought to, was the fact that it is a city-owned facility. And that was a kind of a good reminder for uh, me personally. Further questions on item number four? One of the, you mentioned the fact that they would be willing to pay for 110000 if we extended the contract uh, for one more year. Uh, that puts the, the revenue stream way out a long ways. Uh, how about increasing the contract for a year for a little bit? Uh, over time frame to cover the cost. I just throw that out as uh, something to think about. Uh, yeah, that, that sure, I understand that. Further questions? Okay, let's move to item number five. First reading an ordinance of the city of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, approving a water tank lease agreement, Melanie Lane Water Tower. 
Good evening, Mayor and Council. Mark Cotter with the Office of Public Works. Item five and six have a very similar theme. This is a lease that we have a number of these lease agreements for our water tanks. Number five is a new, it's Altel is uh, once located on the Melanie tank with some large devices and that this lease will facilitate that. The difference in this lease that you haven't seen in previous ones is that this is a three year uh, option instead of a one, one, one. And so, and we're getting that feedback from some of the communication providers that the amount of investment and the one year lease is um, just not long enough. And just with the long term need of our water towers, um, we're comfortable with that. However, the city does have a management firm, um, Lamar Van Hovland with Vantech. He owns and operates Vantech. He is also our third party management firm is in the second row, and if you have detailed questions tonight, we also will bring him forward. Go ahead, Bob. Uh, Mark, is the uh, additional 8500 bucks is that split up over three years, or is that per annum? Actually, that number needs to be reduced to $7,200, and that is, um, that is annual. Our current revenue that we receive from these, we currently have 11 companies with 29 lease locations. And in 2006, we had a revenue stream of $45,617.23. This new um, leasee would add $7,200 to that annual. Further questions on item number five? Let's go to six. First reading, an ordinance of the city of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, approving a water tank lease agreement, 22nd Street and Menlo Avenue. This is a renewal. This facility is actually already in place, and so it's an update to the lease. And it essentially, again, this extends the lease terms. It also has an automatic um, uplift of 10% in it per annual. Questions and, of Mark and item number six. Go ahead. Just on these leases, do we have any information from other municipalities that are doing this on how Seems like a reasonable amount, but how do we know it's a fair amount? Um, that was part of the task that we've tasked Lamar. <laughs> Lamar Van Hevelin, Van Tech Communications. Uh, part of my job is to research what other cities are charging, what other cities of this size are charging for water tower space. And uh, it's been a couple of years since I've done that, but actually we were a little bit high two years ago compared to other cities of our size. I think we're pretty close because we haven't really had any increases in a couple of years, not significant increases. Okay. Uh, further question. Yeah, I guess I have a question. What is the size? How is it relevant to how much we're going to, uh, in comparison to other uh, cities? I mean, who cares about uh, the size of a city when you're talking about? Well, um, the demand for water space is, water tower space is much higher in a city like Sioux Falls than it is a city of. Beersford, for example, because there aren't going to be a whole lot of carriers that want to go on. But we have, um, in Sioux Falls, we have uh, Alltel, Swifttel, Nextel. Uh, we've had Monet. We've got Redwood Communications all coming in to do both cellular telephone and wireless data coverage. So uh, the bigger the city, the more demand for water tower space. Okay. Further <clears throat> questions? Okay. Is there a motion to set the hearing date for items 4, 5, and 6 for Tuesday, January 16th? I shall move, Knutson. Knutson moves. Is there a second? Second, Lutz. Lutz seconds. Further comments? Question. Uh, go ahead. Can, can the Canaries be back to us with an answer as uh, any alternate financing plans by that time? Very good. Thank you. Okay, we've got a motion to make a second to set the hearing date for items 4, 5, and 6 for January 16th. Further comments? No further comments. All in favor of that motion to set the hearing date, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. Council members Knudsen? Yes. Litz? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Venega? Yes. Brown? Yes. Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. All members present have voted. The hearing date has been set uh, for January 16th for items 4, 5, and 6. Item 7. First reading, an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota amending the revised ordinances of the city by revising storm drainage fees and storm <coughs> water drainage system improvement cost recovery. Mayor, members of the council, Robert Ellis, Public Works Engineering Division. 
Um, tonight we have before you a first reading amending the ordinance 41-80 section B-3 and this is the first of one uh, proposed changes. This one would be to the unit financial charge that is used to calculate the drainage fee for the community of the our citizens of, of the city of Sioux Falls. These increases are essentially changing the drainage fee 35% upwards uh, for both, um, I, I suppose, for all types of zoning districts. The second proposed change is in 41-89-5. This proposed language, incre uh, language change is changing the drainage system cost recovery platting fee amount. Essentially, this is an increase of 80% for the various different zonings. And also 41-89-8, again, this is requesting a change to the regional detention charge platting fee, an increase of 80% for those different zoning, uh, zoning types as well. And those are the, the, the proposed changes to the drainage fee. And so okay, questions? Robert, on item number seven. This, this item seven is to advance the second reading to January 16th. Everybody understands that, so um, does we want to take that one? Is there a motion to set the hearing date? I'm comfortable with that. I'll make that motion. So is there a second? Second, let's. Let's second it. All in favor of setting the hearing date for January 16th, five and seven, vote yes, those both vote no. Council members Knudsen? Yes. Litz? Yes. Staggers? No. Benega? Yes. Brown? Yes. Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. All members present have voted. Uh, we have, what, five yes, one, one no, and one excuse. Is that right? Six, six, yes. six, six, one, and one. Yes. Six yes, one, uh, ex one no, and one excused. Okay. Hearing date has been set. Item eight. First reading, an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, approving a grant of permanent easement and temporary <coughs> construction easement. Lewis and Clark Water Pipeline. Chad Heavey, Office of Public Works, Engineering Division. This easement is located in a detention pond that the city owns. It's located south of 85th Street, just west of Louise Avenue. The Lewis and Clark Rural Water System has requested a 15-foot permanent easement and a 58-foot construction easement for pipe installation. The, the easements are um, 15 and 58 feet respectively, and each of them is 200 feet long. Engineering has verified that the pipe placement in that pond will not affect pond capacity or performance and is recommending, recommending approval of this ordinance. Is there questions? Okay, Bob, let's oh, is this ultimately the pipeline that will service Harrisburg if they come back? This pipeline will come um, from the east, or I mean from the west, excuse me, and that will ultimately serve, uh, it'll be the pipeline that extends west and east into Minnesota, so it will be supplying the, the location south of there. I see. Thank you. Other questions? Matt? Can you tell me what's going to happen to that house on the east? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's outside of this scope, but what? Either, I, I don't know if they've acquired that right of way yet. Um, either they would move the pipeline um, to the north, or else um, they would try some type of pipe insulation that would not be uh, as destructive, but I, I can't address that at this time. <laughs> Other questions of item number eight? If not, is there a motion to set the hearing date for February? Uh, what is that? That one's on the 12th. So moved. Mr. Costello moved. Is there a second? Second, Benninga. Benninga seconds. Further comments? Not all in favor set the hearing date for February 12th, Friday, May. Oh, yes, those opposed vote no. Council members Knudsen? Yes. Liz? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Benninga? Yes. Brown? Yes. Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. How many present voted? Seven yes, one excused. Item eight has been approved. Item nine. Deferred action, a resolution vacating South Anthony Avenue. Good evening, Mayor and City Council. I'm Shannon Austin with the Office of Public Works Engineering Division. 
Uh, city planning and engineering continue to work with the applicant on the various neighborhood issues on this proposed street vacation, and we are proposing and making uh, are proposing to defer until the second meeting in February. That's February 12th. I believe so. That's, yeah, that's right. Okay. Is there a motion to defer item nine until February 12th? So moved. Costello, is there a second? Second. Second. Let's, let's second it. Okay. We have a motion been made. Second to defer item nine until February 12th. All in favor of that motion to defer, we'll vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. Council members Knudsen? Yes. Litz? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Benega? Yes. Brown? Yes. Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. All members present voted. Item 9 has been deferred to February 12th. Seven yes, one excused. Item 10. Deferred action, a resolution vacating West 29th Street from South Summit Avenue to South Norton Avenue. This proposed uh, street vacation is an improved right-of-way it, it does exist as a current city street it carries approximately 250 vehicles per day and it is proposed to be vacated to be used as a parking lot for the Augustana campus which is immediately to the west of this area we have had a public meeting uh, there was uh, approximately seven people in attendance there was no major opposition to the street vacation at our last council meeting in December there was a property owner that had gotten up and had concerns over the traffic along Norton Avenue we did do a traffic study uh, of that it contained uh, traffic accidents as well as speeds and volumes, and we did do the necessary uh, studies along that corridor and found that there was no improvements that were needed. And I don't know if that gentleman is here to speak tonight, but we do have the applicant here to talk on the street vacation. Questions of Shannon? Others who wish to address council on item number 10? Not, is there council discussion or action on item number 10? Move for approval, Benninga. Benninga moves. Is there a second? Second. second. Brown. Brown seconds. Benninga moved. Brown seconded. Further discussion? Not all in favor of approving item 10? Well, yes. Those opposed vote no. Council members Knudsen? Yes. Litz? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Benninga? Yes. Brown? Yes. Costello? Yes. All members present voted. Item 10 has been approved. Seven yes, one excused. Mm -hmm. Item uh, 11. Deferred action, a resolution creating Sioux Falls Tax Increment District 7. The Planning Commission recommends approval. Mike Cooper, Planning and Building Services. We have two items tonight pertaining to property at the northeast corner of 9th and Minnesota. Uh, staff is still working with the applicant on these items, and we would like to request tonight a deferral to the January 16th Council meeting for both items 11 and 12. Okay, your motion is to set the hearing date for January 16th for item 11. Is there a motion to do that? So moved. moved. Brown. Brown moved. Second, Costello. Costello seconded to, set, uh, <coughs> to defer until January 12th for item 11. Further comments? No further? Go ahead. If I might, Mr. Chair, could I, could I ask what specific issues you're working on? I know the council had some concerns. I assume those are some of the things you're working on. Right. We're working on the uh, concerns or questions that were brought up regarding the financing plan. Thank you. Further questions? If not all in favor of deferral will vote yes. Those opposed will vote no. Council members Kavanaugh? Yes. Knudsen? Yes. Litz? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Benega? Yes. Brown? Yes. Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. All members present have voted. <coughs> Item 11 has been deferred to January 16th. Is there the same motion to, to uh, defer item 12 to January 16th? Move to defer. Second, James. Go ahead and read it. Excuse me. Item 12, deferred action, a resolution approving the project <coughs> plan for Sioux Falls Tax Increment District 7. The Planning Commission recommends approval. Who made the motion? Move to defer to January 16th. Kavanaugh, who seconded? Jameson. Jameson seconded. Further comments? All in favor of that deferral will vote yes. Those opposed vote no. Council members K Kavanaugh? Yes. Knudsen? Yes. Litz? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Benega? Yes. Brown? Yes. Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. All members present have voted. Item 11 has been, or 12 has been deferred. Item 13. A resolution vacating South Lake Avenue from West 18th Street to West 22nd Street and West 20th Street from South Lake Avenue to Southwest Avenue. This proposed street vacation uh, does vacate improved public right-of-way. It currently exists as a public street. 
There are approximately a thousand vehicles and that travel along Lake Avenue each day. The, the counts that we recently did uh, were adjacent to the new medical building that's currently being built, which is certainly one of the reasons for the higher traffic count. We have worked with the applicant on a, a development plan, and this is the development, development plan that they have submitted to our office. They took this plan to the public meeting. There was a public meeting um, earlier uh, or later last year in 2006, and approximately 10 people attended. There were no major opposition to the street vacation. Of course, the major issues that were talked about were uh, drainage and the tree removal, which the applicant certainly does have a lot of trees that they will be installing with the development plan, as well as making the necessary drainage improvements required with the site plan. Uh, engineering and planning are recommending approval of the street vacation, and the applicant is here to address any issues that you may have. Yes, <clears throat> on uh, the uh, screen, uh, it shows a lot of green space. It shows a lot of green trees and so forth. Uh, I, I asked the questions uh, several council meetings ago, I think, to Chad about Correct. the uh, the tree situation with Sioux Valley, cutting down <coughs> trees that were in the city's right of way. And I was just inquiring if they had received permission to do that or what our policy is. And I will let the applicant uh, address that question. Okay. They are showing, though, they, they did remove the trees as part of the raising and removal of the houses that currently were or previously were located there. To remove those houses, they have to actually get an application from the city, of which the city parks department planning and engineering all approve of the moving route. So our, our agencies certainly had approved the, the travel for the houses to be relocated, but I will refer to the applicant whether or not he actually got the forester's permission to do that. So. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Further questions? Oh, are we gonna, yeah, we did, yeah, did, did they get a formal approval to remove the trees? Mayor, members of the council, Orlin Cheddar, Vice President of Facilities at Sioux Valley Hospital. Uh, the short answer to your question is no. Uh, in fact, uh, in my time at Sioux Valley, I learned just this last week that a formal uh, permit or, or request is required for removal of trees in the right of way. I was not aware of that previously. And in our history of removing uh, trees and doing work around the campus, uh, unfortunately, neither were any of the rest of our staff, so the answer to your question is no, we did not have okay. approval for that. Okay. But at least according to your, uh, the picture that we have shown, you're going to have a lot of trees in the future. We are. In fact, this is one of those uh, rather rare occasions where we stand before you uh, indicating that we will actually be having more green space than what was presently uh, in that area or in that location. Uh, prior to the removal of homes and trees, etc., uh, the greenway that you see on the slide that's uh, above is our uh, proposed plan for that area to the south of where Sanford Children's Hospital will be located, and uh, that area will indeed have more green space and more uh, trees, shrubs, etc., than were previously located there. Thank you. Other questions on item number 13? Is there council you. discussion? Others wish to address council on item number 13. Not council <coughs> discussion or action. Move for approval. Costello, is there a second? Second, Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh seconded. Further, any other further comments? No further comments. All in favor of approving item 13 of vote yes. Those opposed vote no. Council members Kavanaugh? Yes. Knudsen? Yes. Lids? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Finnega? Yes. Brown? Yes. Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. All members present voted. Item 13 has been approved. Eight yes. Eight yes. Item 14. A resolution amending the 2007-2011 capital program by adding the Sioux Falls Stadium renovations project for parks and recreation and a trash pump for public works, water reclamation, parks and recreation equals 200,000, public works, water reclamation equals 29,000. Don Kearney with Parks and Recreation. Uh, the the, this project is a two-piece project, one for Parks and Recreation, which I'll address, and I believe Mark, Mark, Mark Cotter will address the uh, second piece for the uh, trash pump. Uh, this resolution would amend the capital improvement 
program to add the visitor's locker room renovation to the CIP program. Uh, the uh, CIP committee did review and did approve uh, the CIP amendment as uh, uh, shown on your agenda tonight. So I'm glad to answer any questions. Questions of Don and item number 14. <coughs> Others wish dress council in that part. Now we've got Mark. Good evening again, Mayor and Council. This second part of this item is a piece of equipment that's necessary for the Public Works Water Reclamation Department. We're essentially replacing a four inch um, trailer mounted self contained pump unit that we use for a number of um, items throughout the year. The one that we're replacing was originally purchased in 1974. Our purchase amount, we've gotten quotes, is about is about 27 to 28,000, and that's why you see the price of 29,000 um, dollars. And again, we use it for a number of things. Um, of most recent, we used it for the 2004 storm drainage. Um, some of those flooding events when we get uh, surcharged sanitary sewers. If we've got a lift station that we need to do maintenance on, um, there's also opportunities when we have to lower the water in a detention facility so we can go in and do maintenance. So there are a number of items that we use them for. We will fund this item through the um, unrestricted cash fund of Water Rec. Questions of uh, Mark? I have a question. Could this be, would it be any problem to defer this until second reading on the Canary Stadium renovation? I don't think that'll be a problem. We're, our main um, goal is to have it replaced by spring in case we have repeat flooding, and so that time frame is fine with us. Okay, do you want to make a motion? I'll move to defer till the 16th. Is that okay. the one? Yeah. Second, Let's. 16th, item number 14. Is there a second to that motion? Second, let's. Let's second it. Further comments? See no further comments. All in favor, defer on item number 14 till January 16th. Well, yes, so let's close the <coughs> Council members Kavanaugh? Yes. Knudsen? Yes. Litz? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Benega? Yes. Brown? Yes. Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. All members present have voted. Item 14 has been, been deferred until January 16th, 8 to 0. Item uh, 15. A resolution approving the collective bargaining agreement between the City of Sioux Falls and Local 519 of the American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees. Bill O'Toole from the Human Resources Department. Uh, this item is a resolution adopting the third and final uh, labor agreement with the City of Sioux Falls and its labor unions, uh, AFSCME Local 519. Uh, most notable for this agreement, it is a three-year agreement and represents a 3% cost of living increase each year uh, during the next three years. I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Questions of Bill on item number 15. Yes, uh, Bill, I was just curious. Um, we're going to approve that this evening. What would the average salary of a city employee be? The average salary of a mm -hmm. city employee? For somebody under the AFSCME agreement. Uh, I wouldn't have that information right in hand, but I can sort of get it for you. Okay, thank you. Further questions on item number 15, for Bill? Others wish to council on item 15? Council discussion for a motion. Move for approval, James. Benning. Second, Benninger. Benninger, second. Further discussion? Not all in favor of the motion to approve. Vote yes. Those opposed vote no. Council members Kavanaugh? Yes. Knudsen? Yes. Litt? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Benninger? Yes. Brown? Yes. Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. All members present voted. I have 15 has been approved 8 0. Um, now, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Costello, who seconded? Second. Second. Okay. Benning got second. All in favor? We'll vote yes. Those opposed vote no. Council members Kavanaugh? Yes. Knudsen? Yes. Litz? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Benega? Yes. Brown? Yes. Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes.